Do you like having big guns to shoot opponents with? Well, you gotta learn how to save up for it first. What is up Pro Guys family, it's Trey once again and I'm here for another Valorant video. For today, I want to help you guys understand and manage your finances properly to lead you towards a brighter future. By that I mean only for Valorant, sorry. For a lot of you guys transitioning from another game that's not CSGO, you probably won't fully understand how economy works in a game like Valorant. But don't worry because I am here. By the end of this video, you'll fully learn everything you need to know about when to buy the big guns. Before I get into that, our question of the day is, what changes do you think Valorant needs the most? For me, I have a few changes I would like to see. Again, this is entirely my own opinion, but I would like to see Riot maybe increasing the movement speed a little bit when tagged and making less wallbang spots. I feel like these would make the game more consistent and improve gameplay. I want to know what you think of these changes and what you would possibly change. Let me know in the comment section below. And here we go, let's get into our economy guide where you'll learn everything you need to know. Starting on the first round, known as the pistol round, you start out with 800 credits. And every kill you get in the game will net you an additional plus 200 credits. Even though a kill might not seem like it gives a lot, it adds up very quickly. If you can get like 20 kills, that's 4000 credits, enough for an assault rifle and heavy armor. Also netting a kill in what seems to be a meaningless eco round could be the difference between getting a crucial piece of utility on a gun round. In terms of the spike, a spike plant for the attacking side nets them 300 credits for the entire team. Defusing the spike, however, only gives the person who defused it 300 credits. One round win gives everybody on the winning team 3000 credits. Losses, on the other hand, has a loss bonus mechanic for consecutive losses, giving the losing team a better chance to come back with. The first initial losing round gives 1,900 credits. Every additional loss increases the loss bonus by 500 credits, up to a maximum of 3 rounds loss bonus. So the second round loss bonus would be 2,400 credits, and the third round loss bonus would be 2,900. Every loss after the third would still be capped at 2,900. With this, you now have a solid foundation of how Valorant's economy works, but there's still much more to learn. For the pistol round, it's called that because as stated previously, you start out with 800 credits and you can only afford to buy a pistol secondary. Now you can buy the shorty, but it's highly not recommended as it is very situational and doesn't have the all around range you would like. On this round, a better choice would be between either upgrading to a ghost or staying with the classic. We've just recently made a video about this so if you want to go check it out, it'll be in the link below, but I'm going to cover this fairly quickly. The Ghost is more accurate and can one-tap enemies without shields, but at the pricey cost of 500 credits. Meaning, after purchasing the Ghost, you won't be able to buy light shields or full utility. I think the Ghost is powerful and worth it in the right hands, but if you're not confident in using it, feel free to rely on your utility. When using the Ghost, it's best to play a little further in distance and jiggle peeking so you don't get swarmed by classics. The ideal distance would be around 15 to 30 meters away if defending versus a push. At 30 plus meters, the ghost starts having damage drop off, so just keep that in mind. For the classic, it's not as bad as I think people make it out to be. It's pretty inaccurate if you spam it, but if you steadily tap, it's fine. I would say maybe like a steady and consistent 120 beats per minute would be perfect for using this gun to tap for headshots. It also has an amazing burst fire with the alternate fire, allowing for jumping shots and shotgunning people at close range. If you're running through a smoke and an enemy is close into your sight, right clicking their heads is so satisfying. Remember to utilize this mechanic as it's very underrated. You can even kill people with full armor if you land all 3 bullets to the head with your right click so don't underestimate this weapon. If you are sticking with the classic first round, you can either choose light shields or buy full utility. On some characters like Sage and Brimstone, it can be very viable as utility is key for the agent and largely benefits the team. Most other characters would opt for the Light Shields as it increases their chances of survival. Whatever you choose is pretty much all up to preference as anything is viable if you aim and play around it properly. For Do's, do choose either the Classic or the Ghost. For Don'ts, don't buy the Sheriff or Shorty, they're just too situational. And in order to properly play Valorant for optimal buy rounds, you have to look at the minimum next round, located at the buy menu on the top left near your equipment loadout and fully understand it. Keeping tabs on this is an important part to knowing whether you can or cannot buy next round. 3900 is the bare minimum requirement for a rifle and shield, but just remember that you still need utility depending on what agent you're playing. Utility in this context is the agent's ability and how their abilities can be utilized in different situations. That's why it's called utility. 
Different agents require different amounts for full buys due to their utility costs. Knowing how much your total utility cost is important as you want as much utility as you can on a gun round. For example, Phoenix's full utility adds up to 600 while Breach's full utility is only 500. As you can see here, Phoenix will need a total of 4,500 to buy as opposed to Breach's 4,400. Of course, if you are struggling a bit with the money and you can't afford everything, you can choose to give up some utility as well. For Phoenix, if you had to give up something, it would probably be your blaze wall. So if you did, you'd have 4,300 and you're still able to buy. Most of the time, you do have abilities saved from previous rounds, so keep that in mind. For dues, always make sure to keep tabs on minimum for next round. So let's say you lost a pistol and the whole team is sitting on around 2,000 credits, then this round would be considered an economy round so that you can fully buy for the third round, the gun round. Depending on how much you received, either from kills or the spike, you might be able to afford something small this round. If your next round minimum is something like 5,000, then you can probably afford to spend a little on either a ghost or a shorty to give you a better chance of getting some more kills. These tiny kills will give you a little bit of money, 200 as we said before, which helps in the long run, but what you're really looking for with kills on Ecos are ultimate stacks to build your ultimate faster for the future. Ultimates are really strong abilities that help you turn the game around. But enough about that, back to the economy. If your next round minimum is like 7,000, while your teammates are sitting at like 2,000, you can opt for a half buy meaning you have enough to buy full shields and maybe an SMG or a shotgun. This gives you the best chance of winning a round while still being able to afford a full set of equipment next round when your whole team is ready to buy. If you are an opper, you won't be buying much or anything at all on eco and half buy rounds as you would need to save even more to make up for the difference of 1600 credits to purchase the operator. Be sure to not buy too much on half buys or you might even be forced on either a bulldog or light shield and that's not optimal. This is very important so always keep tabs on the next round minimum and your teammates money so that you guys can properly coordinate when to fully buy. Do look at minimum next round and your teammates money to coordinate buys. Don't force buy on eco rounds when teammates want to save. After the eco round, this is where the magic happens. The gun round. If you ecoed properly, you should have enough for full utility, armor, and assault rifle. On the gun rounds, it's important to know how much staying alive does for your economy. Staying alive saves your gun and the remaining shields you have so you don't have to buy it again next round. This means you'll be saving up the bank for a rainy day. If you stay alive for multiple rounds, you should be accumulating tons of money, and who doesn't like that? With the increased money in your bank account, you can drop teammates who aren't as balling as you, and also make it so you can afford to buy operators, which are devastating towards those who peek at it. Your goal in Valorant as a player is to win the round, and you do so by getting kills and staying alive. If you have almost no chance in a round, such as a 2v5 situation, your best bet is to probably save your equipment, meaning run as far away as you can from the enemies so that you can try to stay alive and keep your equipment for next round. Saving in rounds where you most likely have no chance gives you a better chance to win the next round and you might be able to drop for your teammates as well. The economy rewards you heavily for saving, so try to play to stay alive more often if the game is close. The save gun might help your teams buy and therefore increases your chances of winning. Also to note, the cap for money is 9,000 credits, so make sure to be buying teammates before you hit the cap, so money you're obtaining isn't wasted. When you're sitting around 7 to 8k in credits, be sure to offer people a buy even if they can afford a full buy themselves. This way, you're more efficient with the team's money. Nobody likes throwing money away. Do save when rounds are looking lost and also buy for teammates when you're almost at the credit cap. Don't charge in to get kills on lost rounds and throw your gun away. Next is something people don't think quite enough about, which is hurting the enemy's economy. Every kill you get on a fully equipped enemy is a significant wound as it forces them to have to buy again. Remember, even when you're ecoing, make sure to pry guns off of the enemy by killing them. In the long run, it'll see an effect, especially when the game is close and they might not be able to buy, allowing your team to chain more rounds together and build your own economy. If you press tab and see the enemy is very low on credits and saving, be sure to try to hunt them down if you confirm that they are indeed saving. Hunting down guns makes the enemies buy a lot worse, and the worse equipments the enemies have, the better your chances of winning are. Just make sure that they are saving and not doing something like sneaking in and defusing the spike. That's a pretty embarrassing way to lose. For dues, get the kill to ruin the enemy's economy. For the don'ts, don't think that just because it's eco, it's a meaningless round. And lastly, this will be for the anti-eco. 
If you press tab and it looks like they are saving as in under 2k credits and on pistols, then they don't really have much to lose as they just, well, have pistols. However, if you've bought, you have everything to lose as you have a full set of equipment. Make sure you're playing to your weapon strength and playing at range so you don't get swarmed by opponents with inferior equipment. If you have something like a cheap SMG or shotgun, then it's okay to play a little riskier as your gun isn't that great and you might upgrade anyways next round. Just remember when you or teammates die, enemies can pick up the gun dropped and use that gun to win the round. I've seen a lot of times where people lose their gun on an anti-eco round and then everything turns completely sour for them. Giving a good opponent a good gun might be the reason you lose the round. Do play distance and save your equipment. Don't die and give away your gun to the enemy leading to the round loss. And thank you guys so much for staying tuned as that was a lot covered and understandably so because economy plays a big part in a game like Valorant. By understanding how the economy works, you can give your team many more chances to win by coordinating buys and saving properly. By following this guide, you'll see a lot more rounds where you guys will have the big guns and shields due to you managing your economy. I hope you guys learned a lot from this video and that you'll support us by liking, commenting, and subscribing. And before we end the video, I want to give a big shout out to MyGuard, One Less King, Renox, Cicery, and Stylo for boosting our Discord server. If you're interested in joining the Pro Guides family, the link is in the description below. And that's it for today, folks. Again, my name is Trey, and I'll catch y'all next time. Stay safe out there, guys. Peace out.